get this mother... Mean robots suck! Welcome back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to Tales of Production, the series where I take a look at the production of the various Transformers movies and tell you some interesting stories that went down. Today's is going to cover Skids and Mudflap's missing brother that never made it into Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. And before I start, I want to give a quick plug to my 1.19 Java Minecraft server, play.hatchercraft.com. If you want to have a survival experience like no other, feel free to hop on. More info is in the description below. Now, you may be wondering, wait, there was supposed to be three of them? Wasn't two already enough? THERE'S TWO OF THEM?! Well, it appears that there was going to be a third twin, or should I say triplet, that would have stood by Skiz and Mudflap's side. This can be backed up by this very early concept art. For context, the green Chevrolet beat would become Skids, and the orange Chevrolet tracks would end up becoming Mudflap. But the focus of this video is to talk about the guy on the far right, this third twin, who never transitioned from concept to screen like his counterparts. Very little is known about him outside a few concept arts, which unfortunately don't list a name for him. But until we get an official one, I will be calling him Fortu, since he transforms into a gray and silver 2005 smart Fortu. It's unclear how Fortu came to be, but we do know at one point during Revenge of the Fallen's production, three smart cars were pitched to become characters for the film. The Chevrolet Beat and Tracks, which were designed by General Motors as small car concept vehicles, ended up becoming the notorious Skids and Mudflap. However, the third small car, the Smart 4-2, was also considered as an option for a film character. Whether he was meant to be a third character related to Skids and Mudflap, or was supposed to be used in place of one of them, or even a separate character not related to the twins entirely is unknown. What is known is that Hasbro has had great difficulty in the past trying to get likeness licenses from German automakers, which is probably the reason why this character was ultimately dropped. And unlike other cut characters I have covered on this channel that have some backstory to them, this guy's entire existence is only credited to just a handful of early pre-production concept arts floating around the web. Despite them all being very obscure, this face study is probably the most famous one. As we can see, this is a very early study of these characters. We know this since Skids and Mudflap's faces would evolve into something completely different to what we see here. Something interesting to note with 4-2 and something that will carry over to the other concepts is that it seems like he would have been very expressive when using his neck. Something almost akin to Laserbeak in Transform Dark of the Moon. As we know, Laserbeak was able to express a lot of emotion through the use of his neck. And that is something I can totally see for Fortu here. Since in this first study it looks like he is taken aback by something, in the second he seems to be in a neutral pose, and in the third he seems like he is arching his neck forward in order to squint at something or someone. Another thing to point out is that Fortu has red eyes, which as we know is the primary eye color for the Decepticons. However, it's unclear if he was meant to be a Decepticon or an Autobot, especially when you take into account that Wheelie, in addition to Jetfire, both have red eyes despite changing size to the Autobots after defecting from the Decepticon cause. But now let's move on to the next concept art. And here we can see the proposed vehicle lineup compared to the robot sketches for each individual vehicle. Skids and Mufflap now have fully formed bodies but are still using their respective heads from the previous art. Fort 2 on the other hand seems to have a completely different head when compared to his previous concept art. Another thing to note here which we will see in the later two concepts is that from head to foot, 4-2 is taller than Skids and Mudflap. Like his counterparts, 4-2 keeps the tradition of having the lights of the vehicle in front of his chest. Albeit unlike Skids and Mudflap who have their front lights on their chest, 4-2 has his back lights instead. And that's really all to say about this concept. So now let me move on to the last two which are more or less character studies of 4-2. And something that you will see in this concept as well as the final one that I will show you next is that Skids and Mudflap stay the same throughout, with 4-2 being the star of the show. The top study shows 4-2 in a wide stance with the windshield making up his shoulder pads. I'm not sure how much protection that would give him since they are made up of glass, but it's an interesting concept nevertheless. Something I do want to point out and bring to your attention is that in the other five iterations of 4-2 that you will see, the design for his legs, arms, and head will all stay the same throughout. These iterations seem to be playing around with potential torso designs. And if we move to the middle study, we can see that 4-2's posture is now upright instead of a wide stance. And in this iteration, we can see how tall he would have been compared to Skids and Mudflap. 
which I find funny since their vehicles are larger than 4-2s. But it seems like to compensate for that, the artist intentionally made him tall and skinny. Another interesting detail here is that it seems like 4-2 would have four eyes, based upon these two white marks on his head here, which further adds to him being a Decepticon since having four eyes has always been a Decepticon trait. Lastly, I love how he has these panels hanging off of his back in addition to these spikes coming out of his arms, which I think is really cool. Now, if we move on to the bottom and final study for this specific concept art, we can see that 4-2 is in this crab-like stance. It looks like his first iteration if it was crouching down. The only difference is that he doesn't have those glass shoulder pads. And in my opinion, out of these three potential looks, this is my least favorite for him. However, my favorite one would have to be the second because I love that lengthy look. Now let's move on to the last and final concept art. And here we have three more character studies for 4-2. The first one is very interesting, since now he has a lot more bulk to him. And out of the six iterations, this is the widest one due to the addition of this extra part. I really like how he has all this armor on him that shows that he's a true force to be reckoned with. This continues into the middle study, where now he is less plump. He now has this armor around his neck, which kind of reminds me of a bomb suit, which I think is really cool. I also think it's really cool that the armor on his hands and shoulders are popped out, which reminds me a lot of Mixmaster's design, since his armor was also popped out in a similar fashion. And lastly, we get to the final character study, which seems to be a sketch of how 4-2 would move around. And here we can see that he would have crawled on all fours, possibly just like how the Decepticon protoforms did in Transformers Dark of the Moon. Interestingly enough, it looks like this design for him is the same one from the vehicle to robot comparison concept art. And this design for him here seems to be his final look before he was scrapped. I come to this conclusion since in the character studies, Skids and Mufflap's designs are the same ones that made it onto this comparison. But for 4-2's design, he did not appear like this in any of the studies. So if that artwork is indeed the final design for him, it's very possible that a colored version exists somewhere. But unfortunately, at this point in time, there are no traces of it. So with that said, now you know a third twin existed but never made his jump from concept to screen. I would like to hear your guys' thoughts on him since he is really shrouded in mystery. Maybe he could have been the voice of reason for Skiz and Mudflap calming them down before they got into an argument. Or, alternatively, he could have been their evil arch nemesis. Which could have actually been the case, since during the production of Transformers Dark of the Moon, multiple scenes of the twins were filmed before they were cut. The most famous one being Skids and Mufflap driving down an alleyway, which can be seen in the Transformers Chevy rollout video. However, the part that a lot of people don't know about is the scene that was supposedly going to take place after this. According to Transformers live action movie blog, as reported, Transformers 3 has apparently started principal photography in Sherman Oaks, California. Trans fan Ben Brown was on site and recorded a video of a scene being filmed in downtown Los Angeles that shows a car being thrown down an alley shortly after the Autobot twins' cars had filmed a scene. In this video, we can see a car being flipped. And if you have not picked up on it already, this car in question is a 2005 Smart 4-2. Outside this video, there is zero information about this scene whatsoever. The question in my mind is, could have this been a scene where the twins fought and killed 4-2? You could say that the vehicle isn't 4-2 since 4-2 was gray, black, and silver in the concept art, while the smart car we see here is just silver and black. However, concept art should never be held as how the final version of the vehicle will look. Since Skids and Mufflap's vehicles in the concept were cosmetically different to what we ultimately got in the final film. So with that said, I leave this question to you. We know 4-2 was planned and ultimately dropped from Revenge of the Fallen. But do you think they were going to bring him back for Dark of the Moon? We probably will never get an official answer, but it's fun to speculate. And just like that, now you know that Skids and Mufflap were originally going to be a trio with the addition of 4-2 who unfortunately never made it into Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Without you guys, Trans Theories would not be where it is today, so a big fat thank you to all of you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro.